Hi, it's me, and today I'm finally testing out a lens I've wanted to review for a long time, the Samyang XP 10mm f3.5 for full frame cameras. I love ultra wide angle lenses and this one holds the distinction of being the widest angle rectilinear or non fisheye lens available for any digital SLR camera, so that's exciting. There are some other full frame 10mm rectilinear lenses out there, but they're only for mirrorless cameras. To get an idea of just how wide this lens is, here is a 12 to 24 mm lens on a full frame camera, zooming out to 12 mm, and now here's the Samyang 10 mm lens. As you can see, that is gapingly wide, fantastic for shooting indoors or in any other wide open spaces, your pictures will be all background, and so you have to be careful how you compose your images. 10mm is even an ultra wide angle lens on APS-C cameras, the full frame equivalent of 15 or 16mm, so whatever camera you have, it's a lens with huge potential, and as it's from Samyang's XP line of professional optics, hopefully the quality can match its distinctiveness too. It's available in Canon EF and Nikon F mount versions, although it can also be adapted onto mirrorless cameras. It's about £900 in the UK or $1000 in the US. I'd like to thank Samyang's UK distributor for loaning me a copy of this lens for a couple of weeks over Christmas, although as usual, this is a completely independent review. Now let's take a look at the lens's build quality first. Samyang's XP line of lenses really are beautifully crafted, feeling tough and metallic, and finished with lovely brushed black paint. The lens is fairly small, but it is a little weighty at 730 grams. all that glass is pretty heavy. It's based on a metal lens mount, which doesn't have weather sealing, then comes the focus ring, which is rubberized, so it feels lovely to use, but it does have a habit of attracting dust. Something I haven't mentioned so far is that this is a manual focus only lens, although at angles this wide, that's hardly a challenge in use. When you do have to turn the focus ring, it's tactile and extremely smooth to turn. The only thing missing is a hyperfocal distance scale, which would have been really useful. This lens does not have an aperture ring, you can control the aperture with your camera electronically on this one. Unfortunately, there's no room anywhere to use filters with this lens, but considering its extreme wide angle, that's hardly surprising. Perhaps in the future, a filter manufacturer like Lee or Hyder will make some kind of special adapter for it. It comes with a cloth bag and a clip on lens cap, which doesn't seem to clip onto the front all that securely for me. Apart from that though, the build quality is incredibly nice and the lens is a joy to handle. Alright, let's see about image quality. Firstly, I've adapted it onto my highest resolution full frame camera for testing, a Sony a7R2 with its 42 megapixel sensor. At f3.5, in the middle of the image, picture quality is bitingly sharp with excellent contrast. The corners see some softness and a little colour fringing, but the picture quality is not too bad. f5.6 sees a tiny improvement. Stop down to f8 though, for some very sharp image quality in the corners, albeit with a little colour fringing still visible on contrasting edges. f11 sees another marginal improvement, although f16 begins to get a bit softer due to the effects of diffraction. Overall, well, considering the extreme parameters of this lens, it performs well, being incredibly sharp in the middle of your images, and good enough in the corners, and very sharp in the corners at f8 and f11. Anyone using a 24 megapixel full frame camera would be particularly satisfied. Well, let's test the lens now on an APS-C camera. I'm going to really challenge it by mounting it on my new Canon EOS M6 Mark II with its incredibly demanding 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor. At f3.5, we continue to see really excellent image quality in the middle of the picture. Nice. The corners at f3.5 are soft though, f5.6 looks far better, and f8 looks really impressive. Honestly, at f8, that's pretty brilliant image quality considering we're working on such a demanding sensor, I can't imagine any other 10mm lenses being this sharp on that camera, 
Although, as I test more lenses on my EOS M6 Mark II, maybe I'll be proven wrong over time. Alright, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. We see moderate barrel distortion here. Thankfully, it doesn't have a moustache pattern or anything, so it'll be really easy to correct in editing. Vignetting is a bit heavy at f3.5, unsurprisingly, those corners look a little dark. Some of it is almost certainly quote-unquote natural vignetting, caused by the cosine fourth law of light falloff in extremely wide angles. I saw exactly the same thing on the Venus Optics 10-18mm lens. Stop down to f5.6, f8 and f11 to see vignetting slowly reduced. Something I should note for you is that the vignetting seems to have a slight blue colour tint to it. It seems to be a common issue for the very widest angle lenses available, in fact it seemed a bit worse on the Venus Optics lens. Next, let's see about close up image quality. This lens can focus as closely as 26cm to your subject. Ordinarily, that would give you pretty good magnification, but remember, we're working with a 10mm lens on full frame here, so as you can see, this isn't exactly a macro lens. But the good news is though, that image quality close up remains really sharp, straight from f3.5. How well does this lens work against bright light? It's not a great performance here, we see some considerable flaring and glaring. Next, let's test its coma levels. The maximum aperture of f3.5 means that this lens is just barely bright enough for some astrophotography, as you can see here. Over in the corners, the good news is that bright points of light show barely any coma smearing at all, so that's great news for astrophotographers. And finally, bokeh. This optic is definitely not designed for getting out of focus backgrounds. If you're focused as closely to your subject as possible, then the bokeh in your background will look slightly busy. Overall though, I really enjoyed using the Samyang XP 10mm f3.5 lens. It's the widest angle lens of its kind on full frame digital SLR cameras and it's pretty sharp, with good contrast and low coma levels for astrophotography. Its weaknesses include some vignetting, moderate barrel distortion and flaring, but the vignetting and distortion at least can be corrected without any serious problems. At the end of the day, this lens's dramatic, gapingly wide images can really astonish and so it comes recommended.